Islam says it is his democratic right to walk naked through his neighborhood of Inglewood. It's only people's prejudice stopping him, he says, because he's in his mid-fifties and over 300 pounds. He continues what he calls his bun fight for freedom. But we're going back to our main story now, the disappearance of Paramount executive Duncan King, following a weekend party at home of fellow movie executive and colleague Kelsey Macbeth. Emilio Esposito has the story. Peter, it's uh, still kind of hard to say what exactly happened here last night at Kelsey Macbeth's luxury home on Mulholland Drive. Uh, shots were said to have been heard in the early hours of this morning, and Mr. King's car is still parked up in the driveway. An hour ago, I spoke to Macbeth's neighbor's gardener, Fred Sumi, and he says he was definitely awoken by gunshots. Still, he is Filipino and uh, very short, so... Not the most reliable of witnesses, right. We'll get right back to you, Emilio, but we're getting footage here from an incident that occurred about half an hour ago when Kelsey Macbeth's wife, Lydia, came out to talk to our people from KABC. As I say, uh, Mr. Duncan King is actually taking a swim right now. Um, I could not possibly comment on the remarks made by my neighbor's gardener. I can only say that he is, well, Filipino and very short. We're coming back from that report because we got Steve Giraffe in the KNBC chopper with some interesting details. Steve. Peter, we're just taking a humongous loop here over the San Fernando Valley. You know, you know, it's amazing how flat it all is down there. And, you know, I feel like a kid, you know, looking at all kind of dancing in the thermals. Always great to hear, Steve, what the valley looks like from the air. Maybe on the way back, you could tell us what all the traffic congestions like on the 10 and the Santa Ana Expressway. We'd like to know, though, what, if anything, is happening at the Macbeth residence. Yeah, well, there's uh, definitely no body, by which I mean no person, <laughs> per se, in the Macbeth pool. So so some doubts must be cast on Lydia Macbeth's evidence. Thanks, Steve. I'm Peter Jennings, and this is KABC Los Angeles. Suspicions are definitely thickening up there on Mulholland. Still not a whole lot happening, but we're going back to Emilio Esposito, who's been talking to Marge Vrinth. Lydia Macbeth's masseuse. Uh, she definitely had great breasts, you know, and a really gorgeous body, generally. And, you know, I got so shocked, you know, when I saw her come to the front gate. I mean, it's like all our femininity is sort of gone. Uh, you mean like she's been on sex? Gotta leave Emilio there with that startling revelation. I've been talking to Johnny Horsefeathers, a full-blooded Navajo and expert on magic and stuff. Johnny, just tell the folks what you've been telling me. Uh, people up there in Mulholland, uh, they've been saying weather and stuff's, uh, kind of flaky. You know, there's nothing down in Laurel Canyon or Sunset, but up the mountain there, you know, they got snow, they got dust domes, they got houses falling down. Uh, it couldn't just be a quake. <laughs> no way. Uh, this bad medicine, and you know, I'll tell you something else, uh, Peter. A specific kind of bird up there, you know, the ravens, where they all gone horse. They can't make their cheap or caw or whatever it is. You got it. Uh, Ravens losing voice in Navajo lore. That means movie executive being rubbed out. Incredible. Got to leave you, Johnny, because we're going straight back over to Danny Schmeihopper in South Central L.A. What you got, Danny? Peter, this is so unbelievable. This guy here is uh, hooded because he's a pimp, and obviously he doesn't want to get identified. Now, he's got three hookers that he refers to as the three bitches, and I'm going to ask him to talk. Uh, could, could you just uh, talk in this microphone, sir? Thank you. Yeah, right here. Okay. Yeah, all I'm saying is, you know, Kelsey Macbeth, you know, he been playing four-way stuff with my bitches, right? And when I collected the money off of them, you understand, you know, they're telling me how they was urging him to be the head of Paramount Board by any means necessary. And the man, he was kind of unsure. Kept going, if I do it when I do it, I got to do it quick. So, infidelity, another factor there. We're going back to Mulholland as something is definitely happening. We definitely got a situation here, Peter. Lydia Macbeth is apparently, if our zoom lenses are to be relied on, obsessively showering. She must have had, oh, six showers. No, wrong. She's out of the shower. She's looking out a window now. And her eyes are shut. You know, she must be on some stuff. Oh, my God. She's kind of gone like a young guy. You know, no breast or nothing. Oh, that's good to know. Oh, Oh, what's this we're getting? Oh, my goodness. Our cameras are showing the guest house floor, and there is definitely the body of Duncan King. Duncan King is lying on the floor, the man who made the career of so many people. Tom Hanks, Kevin Costner. Oh, I've just been reminded Keanu Reeves, which still does not make it any the less terrible. Yes, confusion hath made its masterpiece. Uh, I'm sorry, Peter. I didn't get that about the masterpiece. Uh, I was quoting, uh, I believe it's Longfellow. 
Uh, that ain't no Hiawatha. You, you talking out your ass, pale face. <laughs> Thank you, Johnny Horsefeathers, for your assistance. Uh, that's okay. But we're going right back to the front of the Macbeth residence because things are definitely happening. Emilio, talk to me. We're just picking ourselves up here. Uh, Cassie Macbeth has driven through his security gates. I repeat, Cassie Macbeth has driven out at terrific speed and he's shooting. People are hurt. There's a lot of blood here. I'm sorry, uh... You know, it's, it's kind of hard to concentrate with the bullets and all, you know. I'm running along Mulholland, uh, and the Macbeth car is coming after me. Uh, we have lost Emilio Esposito there. Guess we have some kind of a problem. But we'll go straight back to Steve Giraffe in the chopper. Steve, hit me. Peter, uh, we're tracking the car as it heads down Woodrow Wilson into Laurel Canyon, and oh, he is burning rubber. Oh, he's hit a truck. Wow. And he's knocked it off the edge. I can just read the logo. Banquo Laundry. I confirm it is definitely a Banquo Laundry truck. The driver's just got to be toast, you know. Uh, no one's getting out. No, no. Wrong. Kid's getting out. Yeah, he's running. Macbeth was shooting at him, but the police are closing. Macbeth is back in the car. He's giving up. He's, he's heading south now. He's on a sunset. He's got to be heading for LAX. Or maybe someplace else. Oh, the car is definitely making for the airport. And oh my God, he oh, he swung into the crash barrier. He's out. He's running. Yeah, police vehicle is also stopped. An officer is out and he's running after Macbeth. Yes, and we got a name to hang on that officer. It is Officer Wayne McDuff. We know that because he has a pronounced limp. Some kind of birth defect, we understand. And oh, Steve, no, hold it, Steve. We got the picture here. Kelsey Macbeth appears to be shot dead. The officer is going over... It's over. No, no. Macbeth is moving. That's great. Because now we have got one heck of a trial. I'm Peter Jennings, and this is KABC.